We live in a time when we have to make peace with nature. The state of the earth is a major topic this decade, and especially this week. In fact, it's World Environment Day on June the 5th. This year, the central theme will be ecosystem restoration. Now, that can take many forms, like growing trees, rewilding land, or making cities greener. Today, we're going to look at some of those. Millions of people have been migrating to cities for decades, but 2020 shook our perception of urban life. From places of socialization, cities became places of fear and people started escaping to the countryside, causing a boom in remote working. The question of how cities must evolve is getting more and more attention in a moment when trends and actions are accelerating. So today, we have here two people who are working to make cities more sustainable. One is the creator of the famous Bosco Verticale, the building we're in today, here in Milan. Stefano Boeri, architect, urban planner and president of Triennale Milano. And also of the scientific committee of Forestami, the project to plant 3 million trees in the Milan area by 2030. Our other guest is a car maker, the man in charge of the Fiat brand around the world and also CMO of Stellantis, but in particular, the man behind the new electric Fiat 500. Today we'll look at the vision they share and how to make change happen. Uh, but let's start with a little story that brought them together. So how did you two meet and start sharing ideas? Well, we actually met in an emergency, March uh, 2020. That was pretty dramatic. Uh, I, I was getting ready to present the new electric 500 at the Geneva Auto Show, like uh, every other car maker, but then uh, hell broke loose, as we know and uh, the show got cancelled uh, with almost no warning. We didn't even know the word lockdown back, back then, but um, things were really crazy. And um, that new 500 was so important uh, to our future that we had to do something. You know, uh, for Fiat, uh, 500 is an icon. Uh, it has been an icon for three generations of people. Uh, so we quickly put together a, a presentation in Milan and um, Stefano, Stefano Boeri, uh, kindly let us uh, use uh, Triennale Museum. So um, that was uh, a beautiful gift. Uh, the 500 uh, um, didn't have a home in Geneva, but it found an even better home uh, in Milan with um, the Triennale. Uh, so later, um, when we started with a commercial, uh, the one that features uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, we uh, decided to feature a, a cityscape inspired by uh, your Bosco Verticale. Uh, so the fact that we are here uh, today inside this incredible landmark uh, is a great pleasure. Uh, I, I love the idea that everything comes full circle after more or less one year. Thanks, thanks Olivier and, and welcome. Uh, so uh, I'm really glad that you can finally see uh, the Bosco Verticale from inside this time. And uh, well, at the Eternale we were extremely happy to have you with us. Uh, just before the lockdown uh, and well was a tough time but tough moments can spark new ideas and uh, now we have the Bosco Verticale sending its message out in your TV spot and the message is electric cars and green architectures are two efficient tools to clean the polluted air of our cities so I believe that we are really both promoting the same thing cleaner air in a healthier cities. Absolutely. So you were making two kind of different icons work together, uh, an electric city car and a tall city forest. Yeah, the, the whole story uh, of this new 500 is uh, about inspiring change. Uh, and let me say, uh, places like this, Bosco Verticale, uh, does exactly the same thing. You know, it's a perfect match. Uh, Stefano, uh, is working to inspire change in the urban quality of life, while we are all about changing how people move around it. So both are beautiful projects because, at least for what I think, uh, beauty inspires change. Yes, yes, I, I agree. Uh, let's a little bit go deeper in this issue. So we, when we consider that cities are responsible for the emission of more than 70% of, uh, of CO2, 
which is at the root of the global warming. And the emission of pollutants that uh, endanger our health, uh, it is clear that cities are where we must need to change. And the COVID pandemic showed us how fragile our lives and bodies can be. And so it showed uh, us the importance of improving the environment in which we live. For years, we have been engaged in a big campaign for urban forestry. And if electric cars can reduce emissions, trees can absorb emission into the air. So, you know, uh, this building has uh, approximately 20, 21,000 plants and millions of leaves that absorb not only CO2, but also particulate matter. Uh, let me explain more about that. Air pollution is recognized as the largest environmental risk factor for health in Europe. 91% of world population breathes air above uh, World Health Organization air quality guidelines. And the World Health Organization estimates that particulate matter contributes to approximately an estimated 6.5 million deaths. It's 11.6% of all global deaths. And 6.4 million lost years of healthy life in cities. 6.4 million lost years of healthy life. I mean, this is crazy. I mean, I didn't know that number. Uh, and I think that's the whole purpose of our chat today, you know, uh, rewriting the future of our, of our cities. I mean, I'm personally growing four kids in a city like this, uh, in uh, Pianura Padana, and we need, to do, to, we need to take action, we need to do something. And I think that's really inspiring. 6.4 million years yeah, of, uh, yeah. you're, that you're are lost uh, for our healthy life. I mean, uh, plus 12% of all global death. You are totally right. And just imagine that Pianura Padana, Povale pollution levels are so high that it's considered the worst year in Europe for air quality. And, and again, air pollution increases the incidence of a wide range of diseases, respiratory and uh, cardiovascular disease and cancer, uh, with both short and long-term health effects. If we consider a traditional and obsolete urban planning, well, it leads to sprawl and over-dependency on private vehicle transport, and is also a major factor in accelerated pollution emission because it underlines the importance of proximity and walkability in our city. On the other side, uh, epidemiological study from all over the world establishes a positive relation between the amount of green spaces in people's living environment and health, showing a significant reduction in heart rate and heart rate variability, diabetes, cardiovascular mortality. Why this? Because trips absorb CO2, drastically reduce uh, pollution, reduce energy consumption, and the urban heat island effect. Trees are increasing biodiversity of living species and make cities safer, more pleasant, healthier, and attractive. So in a way, we could say that trees are the only way we have to absorb already emitted pollutants. So how can we actually put this in practice? Like, what are the solution to this? Well, many, not only one. We have to first protect and increase permeable and green surfaces in our, in our cities. Uh, we have to create, to multiplicate the number of parks and gardens. We have to transform city roofs into lawns and vegetable gardens, like doing in Paris. We have to transform perimeter walls and urban barriers into green facades and transform urban voids and courtyards into green oases uh, to promote community gardens uh, and implement urban agriculture, to use tree roots to decontaminate polluted soils, to create a network for green corridors to connect parks, forests and green buildings, to multiply the number of green buildings and vertical forests as we are doing, and to create new orbital forests and woodlands all around our city. So, uh, many solutions. And just to give an example, exactly what we are trying to do in Milano with the Forestami project, aimed to planting 3 million trees in Milano metropolitan area within 2030. It's a project which I believe has a great value in such a difficult area uh, because it provides a significant reduction of uh, uh, particulate matter.
to go back to the Bosco Verticale. Bosco Verticale is, a, I believe it's nowadays a living manifesto of urban, bio, urban forestry in architecture. It required an expansive research uh, at the beginning because including tests in a wind gallery in Florida, uh, insurance issues and so on, but it's now an icon, the model, and the, I believe it's a new prototype of architecture. But uh, the change does not require only urban forestry. It's a matter of renewable energies, of rethinking mobility, a matter of social inclusion. So everything must be kept together if we are looking towards change. Okay, so this change seems quite urgent now, right? Um, Olivier, what can we do about it? And uh, sometimes you mentioned the, the words all in. Yeah, yeah. What does the, it mean? The choice to launch a new 500 as electric only actually was made before COVID. As you can imagine, it takes a lot of time to develop a new car. Uh, but uh, already back then, we felt that the world uh, was at a point uh, where we couldn't accept more compromises. Uh, so now, this choice is obviously even more uh, relevant. Uh, lockdown was just another, another wake-up call, you know, somehow. Um, by the way, some images are stuck in my memory, you know, seeing wild animals uh, uh, in the cities, um, seeing maps of reduced uh, smog around Milan or LA. Uh, so COVID was just a confirmation. Compromise is not a solution. Uh, if we offer the polluting version of 500, uh, we could sell it uh, easily. But 500 is an icon. Uh, and uh, all true icons have a cost. So we felt uh, a duty to use uh, the charisma of 500 uh, to do something more than just selling cars. Uh, clearly, it's a gamble, uh, and we are far from having won yet. But the idea is, and that's all in, you know, the car is beautiful enough, it's super well engineered, uh, it's an icon, so it may inspire change, exactly as you did, Stefano, with the Bosco Verticale. Uh, I mean, people may buy it, despite the fact that it is electric. Not everyone wants to drive an electric car. So that's a big thing for a car maker. Uh, what are some of the other big themes from uh, um, an architect's point of view? Well, I, I, I've just uh, published a book on that, Urbania, and where I try to sum up some of the uh, the issues that can drive the change. One of them is uh, the creation all over the world of uh, planetary biodiversity corridors. We have an example, amazing, in, in Africa. So the Great Green Wall that African countries started to build in 29 uh, in the sub-Saharan region to stop the extension of the desert, of the Sahara Desert. I believe we have to uh, replicate this model of biodiversity corridors in all the continents of the planet. And that's something that is in, uh, let's say, in, in the United Nations plans for the future. Another is to, uh, let's say, imagine that cities should become uh, uh, metropolitan archipelagos. So I believe the future of cities to be composed by neighbors, self-sufficient neighbors, uh, will be surrounded by green environment, by green corridors. A third is urban forestation, urban forestry. And, and, uh, and for sure, another one is, uh, as you were saying, Olivier, it's about, urban, about soft mobility. So uh, no longer based on the concept of ownership and uh, for sure without burning fossil fuels. Uh, again, if we observe at a larger scale the, our territories, I believe in a kind of reciprocity between metropolises and networks of rural and historical villages that we have rediscovered thanks to the possibilities offered by, by Smart Working, who was one of the, let's say, acceleration produced by, by COVID. In a general way, I believe that the tripartition living, working and leisure time is over. And we need more fluidity in the urban environment that means the possibility of transforming collective function outside into public space uh, to create and produce a grid fluidity also in interior space. And all this is related to an idea of community as a place where the distance between bodies never affects the intensity of relationship. 
So in a way, the future, the future of city, it's, uh, it's uh, more or less what you were saying about uh, the opportunity for a new renaissance. So the boom in remote working seems to suit both of you perfectly. Um, will the future be living on a green hill and occasionally commuting to the city just to work or would it be different? And, and what do you mean by new renaissance? Well, I personally like that um, uh, you called it uh, uh, remote and not smart uh, working because I always think of uh, how lucky we are, you know, as white colors uh, to be able uh, to be allowed uh, to work in remote uh, mode. Not everyone has uh, this chance. This being said, remote working uh, means uh, reduced mileage, clearly. And some estimates are that um, that average mileage went down 75% during lockdown. So even uh, in absence of electric cars, it's clear that remote working um, does well. I mean, it, this is 75% uh, less CO2. So my idea is that uh, the so-called remote working can kick off a virtual circle uh, with positive impact on uh, traffic congestion, quality of life, uh, and more importantly, of the air. And yes, I do like uh, to call it a new renaissance. Uh, renaissance, uh, uh, you know, is um, what happened uh, after a war, what after what happens after a crisis, uh, it's always an opportunity to better conditions of life, to get to a better world. Uh, so yes, I think that what comes next uh, can be a renaissance if we all take this uh, opportunity to, to, to work and tackle the issue. So new renaissance and beauty and inspiration, it seems very simple, but is it? This is a good question. I mean, we live in very complex times, so uh, simplicity uh, is a key. Uh, and uh, if the switch to electric is, uh, was simple, we would not probably be sitting here talking of it today. Uh, so concretely, we have two uh, big barriers uh, to break down to get electric cars into the city. Uh, so the first is for car makers, making electric cars affordable. Uh, so Fiat is making things affordable uh, with a lot of um, ideas, uh, ideas like uh, paper mile, um, car sharing packages, uh, models with different range autonomy. Uh, I'm trying to bring up the idea of swappable batteries, you know, uh, so this is very, very important. There is no limit to creativity. Now, the second barrier is much more complex. It is the availability uh, of charging. And that's where my friend uh, Stefano can probably help. And let me explain you why. So uh, for now, the home of electric are private homes. You know, this is much more important than public charging points. Private homes, because one, um, private EV charging costs are 50% of public station prices. So, so when you charge your car at home, you pay half. That's why people charge at home. And two, uh, because it resolves people's biggest logistical problem, uh, which is stopping uh, to charge. So now, Stefano, my main challenge to, to you, urban designers, is to help me solve a paradox. I mean, the paradox of the EV world is that, so far, it is growing where people have a garage. And where do they have a garage? Outside the city. Uh, in fact, 70% of my electric 500s are bought uh, by people who live in suburbs or villages with private villas and garages, not in the city, out of the city. So I said I need your help uh, because, as a matter of fact, 75% of Italians, where do they live? They live in condos. And half of which have for now no private parking space. So there's a huge reconversion job uh, to do on existing condos. So yeah, let's start with private charging infra infrastructure. And um, you mentioned reconversion earlier. What does reconversion mean for you? We are now, for instance, working on the reuse of existing buildings. Uh, with different functions, using green system to add value to the quality of life in previously obsolete buildings. Uh, in Brussels, or in Prato, we are working on retrofitting public residences and private offices, transforming in a, let's say, kind, in a kind of urban jungles, adding new green facades to existing buildings. And at the same time, uh, in the new 
vertical forests that we are building all over the world, we are working to improve energy efficiency. And now I come back to what you were saying, Oliver, because uh, I believe that we could start now to, to transform in reality what Jeremy Rifkin was proposing 20 years ago. So uh, to, to, that buildings will become uh, energy collectors. I believe that upgrading from an energy environmental point of view, the obsolete energy intensive and degraded building stock for Italy, we have over 4 million buildings in a poor condition, is another fundamental message. Okay, so buildings as energy collectors and distributors. How about um, public charging infrastructures? So it's not really the job of car makers, you know, it's a responsibility of the authorities. Uh, but well, we are trying to do our part. Um, as an example, we are working on uh, public infrastructure through our joint venture with um, NGEPS. Um, one thing we are uh, trying to focus on. Um, among uh, all, all, all other things, uh, is the circular uh, economy you were mentioning, Stefano. So the idea to equip um, parking spaces with solar panels um, and the possibility to use our cars as uh, the batteries of our cars uh, to stock the energy uh, from the sun and redistribute it uh, to the grid. Uh, so we use uh, our cars not just to drive, uh, but as a storage for energy uh, that then can be dispatched um, to the city when and, and whenever needed. Uh, so I think this is very important, you know, uh, because um, things exist when they have a purpose. Um, and the purpose of a car should not just be, uh, you know, to bring you from point A to point B. Uh, if a parked car can have the purpose, then I think there's really a future uh, for automobiles. Uh, so this being said, uh, it's interesting to see that uh, while there are actually objectively lots of vacant uh, charging stations, at least enough uh, for all the EVs on the road for now, uh, people complain that there are never enough columns. I do the same, you know, I drive my car, I don't see these columns, so I'm always complaining. But truth is, there is one column for every 10 cars in Europe, so the situation is, is not so bad. Um, the point is, they are just not visible enough. So this is for people like you, Stefano, uh, designers, um, to come in. You know, let's make these uh, charging stations uh, more beautifully visible. You know, uh, we all have the location apps on our phone. Um, we can find the columns. It's not enough. You know, um, I think this is an interesting theme uh, for urban designers: make uh, columns more visible. I mean, some petrol stations um, in the 50s were very iconic. Uh, so why not do the same with uh, the charging stations? Now, there is another uh, issue. Um, Out-of-home charging uh, must be faster. So we have all these charging stations. Uh, the thing is, not all of them are fast charging. So I want more fast chargers in the street. I want uh, every uh, owner of a 500 uh, to be able to plug uh, on a fast charging station. That's wonderful. So since we're here, all together, uh, let's talk about collaboration. Uh, the theme of World Environment Day this year is restoring our ecosystem together. And this together is the key word, right, Stefano? The future is green architecture, soft mobility, and hydrogen. Hydrogen is, uh, for sure, the green hydrogen is the future, but uh, at the same time, we have to go step by step with what we have now. So green buildings and electric cars. What's your take on this? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think that hydrogen is the next step, uh, but we need to go step by step. And hydrogen will fit very well uh, in the first step. Uh, the LCVs, what we call LCVs, are light commercial vehicles. So we are investing uh, a lot, and then it will contaminate uh, cars as well, but that's not before 10 years probably. Uh, so for now, we need to work with, with electric. Now, my take uh, to your point, uh, is uh, that I agree, we, we, we believe at Fiat in working with anyone who shares uh, this idea of the new eco-renaissance, um, including uh, ventures with energy companies, as I mentioned before, uh, working with uh, urban designers like Stefano, 
uh, working with uh, celebrity activists like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, who is our uh, endorser. Uh, so we are both doing a sort of systemic activism. That's a little bit the point. So what do you think is next? What, what can we expect from the future? The first is uh, affordability uh, or accessibility for everyone. Uh, in Eindhoven, uh, uh, a vertical forest will soon be inaugurated in, uh, in social housing. And, and the same we are doing in the uh, Hubei region, Hanguang in China. So it's a vertical forest for, for everybody. Uh, then we are introducing a, a variation in terms of typological settlements. So we, we are now working, like we are doing the Polyclinic Hospital in Milano with, uh, with a roof, with green roofs, with huge green roofs or in Antwerp, uh, where we are realizing a new prototype of vertical forest based on a common central courtyard. And again, the future is a multi-purpose green architecture, and uh, it's exactly what we are building in, in Utrecht or, or Nanjing. And uh, just to go back to the basic components of our building, we are investing so much in wood and timbers as uh, structural material, because it's a way to cut the production of CO2 during the construction process. So that's a, just a, a simple way. So the, the next scenario, the next scenario is uh, it's, uh, to change the scale and uh, to imagine how to develop uh, smart and forest cities all over the world. We are now, uh, let's say, involved in a project in Mexico and another in China. Uh, entirely self-sufficient in energy production, based on the principle of proximity and walkability, and completely inhabited by trees and plants together with humans. So what's your take on this? What's your vision? Yeah, so uh, first let me just rebound on what you said, because I, I think, Stefan, that was pretty inspiring. Uh, that was pretty inspiring because, and I'm just reacting, you know, to what you just said. Uh, I think that after all, uh, Beauty and creativity will save the world. People like you, these ideas uh, will save the world. And, and why uh, you were speaking, I was realizing that uh, uh, maybe with some nationalistic pride, uh, you know, beauty and creativity are really two virtues um, of it, Italy. And I'm French, so uh, I, 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 this is absolutely not uh, meant to be self-serving. But um, I, I think that uh, really, um, this wealth of ideas that you bring on the table um, are really inspiring and, and will, uh, will do a lot of uh, good uh, to the planet because it is urgent. Um, on our side, so there are two things. Uh, on, the, uh, on the car uh, business uh, side, I can tell you that for us there is no doubt. We are literally going uh, in the direction of going all electric, only uh, electric. Obviously, uh, we need to go step by step, but this will be very fast and big steps. Um, uh, Fiat has a mission. You know, Fiat invented uh, back in the days, uh, uh, how do you say, affordable uh, mobility, you know, for all. That's what Fiat was. Um, and all Italians know that. Cinque Cento, as an example, was born from this vision, you know, make mobility um, affordable uh, for all. So I think that now our new mission is to make mobility sustainable for all. Uh, so sustainable for all means that we need to tackle the cost. Uh, I cannot, as long as uh, electric cars will be uh, elitist cars, um, we have no room. So our duty, um, and playing also on the fact that the cost of the batteries will go down, is to offer as quick as possible to the market um, electric cars that will not cost more than the um, internal combustion cars. So that's uh, the project. This will happen, uh, I think, between 2025 and 2030. Um, so all our lineup will become electric. And as soon as we are able to, uh, to tackle this cost of electrification, again, between 25, 26, 27, then we'll totally switch um, to electric, electric only, and it will be a, a, a very, uh, how can I say, very radical uh, future uh, for Fiat, uh, exploring this territory of, uh, uh, you know, sustainable uh, mobility for everyone. Now, closer than, um, than that, um, uh, literally for the next uh, months, um, there is something 
super cool that I wanted to, uh, to tell you. So uh, as today we are guests in this vertical forest, uh, I also have a little urban project um, of uh, my own. So, and this one will be on the roof of the Lingotto. So a couple of times, Stefano, you mentioned of the green roofs uh, and actually we, we, we landed a little bit on the same uh, conclusion. So uh, this is a project that's very close to my heart. So. Um, we are putting part of the money that traditionally would uh, go in marketing uh, into something much more sustainable and that, unlike marketing, is not going to be burnt you know, uh, overnight, but will last for generations. So what am I speaking about? Um, I'm speaking about reconverting you know, this legendary test track. You know, I mean, in Italy, everyone knows uh, uh, about this incredible test track uh, that is on the roof of our old factory in Turin called Lingotto. Uh, so we'll convert it into the largest hanging garden in the world. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not as radical as you are. It's not a vertical garden. It will be traditionally a horizontal uh, garden. Um, uh, there will be 28,000 trees and plants. Uh, so a lot of green closer to the sky. I love this idea. Bring, you know, uh, a forest. Uh, so it's not a vertical forest, but it's a sky forest. So we bring green closer to the sky and we bring it uh, on the roof an old uh, polluting factory where we used to build cars. So, uh, and we are going to use that to recharge, you know, to revitalize Turin, our city, our community. Um, so I think this is going to be uh, an incredible, incredible moment and I'd like to invite you uh, Stefano and Silvia uh, to, to, uh, to be our guest uh, at the official opening, uh, which will be in September. So this is not far. Um, I think it could be actually a very good follow-up uh, to this chat. Do you agree? Absolutely. It will be a pleasure to be there. So I believe that, uh, well, I, I used to call Cinquecento, not 500. Cinquecento and, and Bosco Verticale, Vertical 4, uh, are the result of, of, of a design, of a design process. And, uh, that's a way to confirm how uh, the Ita Italian tradition could, uh, let's say, produce amazing products when beauty and efficiency are together. Exactly. So maybe soon at uh, La Pista Cinquecento, which is the name of this uh, new project. Uh, I, I think you are going to love it. That's great. Thank you. Well. Making peace with nature can certainly take many forms. So thank you Stefano Boeri and Olivier Francois for talking to us about building and driving a better future. Inspiration sure is in the air 